Hello, welcome to Vedial Vagaparai. In this video, we are going to see gravimetric analysis. This video is based on IIT JAM 2023 question. This video will be useful for all students who will be taking IIT JAM examination and also CUTE examination and for those who are attempting UGTRB chemistry examination. Uh, this particular portion is part of the analytical chemistry syllabus uh, of UGTRB. So now uh, let us see the question. In a gravimetric estimation of aluminium, a sample of 0 0.100 grams of ALCLC is precipitated with 8 hydroxyquinoline. The weight of the precipitate is the given atomic weight of aluminium is 26.98, molecular weight of ALCLC is 133.34, and molecular weight of 8 hydroxyquinoline is 145.16. Round off to four decimal places. So in this question, we are given the starting weight of the starting material and then we are asked to find out the weight of the precipitate. So first and foremost, we must understand the basic principle of gravimetric estimation, then the principle of this particular reaction, the significance of the reagent that is being used and then we will do the calculation for this particular question. So first and foremost, what is gravimetric analysis? In gravimetric analysis, the mass of a product is used to calculate the quantity of the original alanite. So, in this particular case, AlCl3 is used and then the product is given and we are asked to calculate the amount of product. So, in all gravimetric analysis, this is how the analysis is done. We will have the original alanite in a liquid state and then we will precipitate the product and the mass of the product will help us to give the quantity of the um, original analyte or the quantity of entity that we are looking at in the original analyte. It is a quantitative conversion. So, if gravimetric and uh, volumetric analysis are quantitative analysis. They are called quantitative because quantity. Okay. So, uh, they give us the amount of the substance whether you are doing volumetric analysis or gravimetric analysis. At the end of the calculation, we express the quantity of the substance obtained in grams. So, that is why it is a quantitative analysis and uh, it is a quantitative conversion of the constituent of interest and the subsequent separation and isolation of the product of known composition that is suitable for weighing. This is more important. Not every kind of equation can be or every kind of reaction can be analyzed by a gravimetric method. Only those that have sizable weight as the product weight and which can be easily obtainable as a solid can be studied using gravimetric analysis. And as we know when we compare it with volumetric analysis, in volumetric analysis we need a standard solution to standardize. Whereas here you do not have to worry about the strength of the solution. All that you need is the quantity of the starting material and the quantity of the product to find out the um, relevant details. So, it is a standard let's method. So, no reagent has to be standardized. And of course, you do not have a reference. And very importantly, what is necessary in a gravimetric analysis is a calibrated balance. Because all analysis, all part of the analysis will be through weighing only. So, the samples will be weighed, the crucibles will be weighed. So, in every step of gravimetric analysis, it is the weight of the substance and so a, a well calibrated balance is a necessity in case of gravimetric analysis. So, these are some of the fundamental requirements of a gravimetric analysis. Of course, there is also a possibility we can test the purity of the product. Now, let us look at this experiment. In this experiment, we are going to make use of 8 hydroxyquinoline to precipitate aluminum. 8 hydroxyquinoline is also represented as 8 H cube, and this is a popular reagent that has been used to precipitate aluminum. This is the structure of the molecule, it is an organic molecule, it is a quinoline derivative. And then it is also called as oxine, N-E. It is not oxine, it is oxine, O-X-I-N-E. So, when the word oxine is written, we must remember it is 
8 hydroxyquinoline that is being talked about and uh, more importantly the kind of precipitation reaction that is uh, employed or uh, is seen in this particular case is aluminium is forming a coordinated compound with 8 hydroxyquinoline and 8 hydroxyquinoline is called as a chelating agent it is called as a chelating agent because uh, you, you, we know the uh, chelating agent is one which is able to form two or more coordinate bonds. So, in case of 8 hydroxyquinoline, we have a nitrogen which is having a lone pair of electron, and then oxygen again it has lone pairs of electron, and the proton when it leaves oxygen acquires a negative charge. So, this particular molecule is a bidentate ligand. So, because when you are having organic molecules with more than one point of attachment or more, more than one site of coordination being formed then such molecules are called as chelating agents because chelate from the word claw like crab like structures they form crab like structures and so they are called as chelating agents and so the chelating agents are popularly used in many different kinds of day to day applications and uh, precipitation of aluminium by 8 hydroxyquinoline is one such method so it forms uh, forms a coordinate bond so now let us look at the principle of this particular reaction so aluminium chloride aluminium we know is in the plus 3 oxidation state reacts with 8 hydroxyquinoline to form the complex so, and uh, proton is removed so uh, i have not written the hill notation but i have written the notation in such a way so that uh, we can differentiate between the hydroxyl proton and the proton of the uh, quinoline ring system. So uh, if it was the Hill notation, it we must have written it as C9H7NO. But then uh, that may not give us a correct idea of how the structure would look. That is why I have represented the molecular formula in this format for us to understand that there is a OH group in this molecule and there is a nitrogen atom which are uh, electron donating sites or coordinating sites and likewise we see the proton in this particular OH is removed and then so oxygen acquires a negative charge and then we have nitrogen that has a lone pair of uh, electrons. So this is how the chelation happens. So the three molecules of 8 hydroxy uh, so there is there is no hydroxy now so it is quinoline derivative oxy uh, derivative which is interacting with aluminium so there are all together six coordination sites for aluminium so this particular molecule is called as tris 8 hydroxy quinolinato aluminium and it is denoted by the notation alq3 Q3 because there are three units of the uh, quinoline uh, derivative which is uh, being coordinated and then uh, when we are having um, you know numericals in uh, to be represented we cannot use by tri rather we will use bistris because already in the molecule itself we are having number so there is eight already given in the uh, ligand name. So, in order to avoid confusion, whenever there is a, a numbering system in the ligand itself, then when multiples of the ligands are used, we use the prefix bistris, etc. So, here there are three quinoline derivatives units present and so that is the reason why we use the notation tris. So, the molecule that is formed here, this molecule is called as tris 8 hydroxy quinolinato aluminium. So, this complex is actually a octahedral complex. So, there are 6 coordinated sites. So, aluminum forms an octahedral complex with these um, nitrogen, 3 nitrogen atoms and 3 oxygen atoms. <coughs> and uh, uh, this particular molecule exists in 2 geometrical isomers. One isomer is called as the meridonial, another isomer is called as the facial. Uh, so, the, uh, the molecule when we write it in 2D form, we cannot look, uh, we cannot make or dis bring about a distinction between the geometrical isomers. But when we see a three dimensional orientation of the molecules, we can see here in case of meridonial, uh, the similar groups that is, let us say, for example, oxygen at um, uh, ligands and then the nitrogen ligands, uh, they, they are, uh, you will see 
uh, they are at a different position. Whereas here in this uh, facial side, uh, when you see they are on the alternate positions. Yeah, actually speaking, when we see from this face, that is uh, the, the direction on which we are looking at, you know, it appears as though three the three oxygens are on, on one side and the three nitrogens are on the other side. That is, they face each other. The oxygen and nitrogen face each other. Whereas in this particular case, they are not facing each other. They are perpendicular to each other. So uh, when you see this particular uh, structure, this uh, is uh, perpendicular to this. So they are not facing each other. And that is the reason why this is meridonial, whereas this is facial. These are two geometrical isomers of the molecule. They are two different entities. And more importantly, the most important application of ALQ3 is in organic light emitting diodes. That is all the OLEDs that we see in our day to day life are due to the use of this ALQ3s. Uh, so, ALQ3 gives a green fluorescent color. So, after the separation of meridonial and facial uh, isomers, uh, people found out that uh, meridonial ALQ3 gives a green fluorescence, whereas the facial ALQ3 gives blue fluorescence. So, the isomers by themselves have two distinctive colors. So, this application of this particular complex is very, very important. That is the reason why this particular gravimetric analysis, this particular reaction is very important by from competitive examination perspective because it is very much used in our day-to-day -day applications. So, now let us go to the question. So, in this question, uh, we are asked to find out the amount of precipitate form. So, for that first, let us see the equation. So, the AlCl3 reacts with the, uh, the precipitating agent, 8-hydroxyquinoline to form the complex and the product. So, now what we have to do is find out the molecular weight of AlCl3. Molecular weight of AlCl3 is already given. And then we have to know the molecular weight of the product that is formed. Because we are given the amount of ALCl3 and they are asking us how much amount of product that is formed. So, we know uh, from our uh, stoichiometric relationship uh, that uh, one mole of ALCl3 forms one mole of uh, uh, the complex and it required three moles of the particular uh, precipitating agent or the chelating agent. So, accordingly we will see the molecular weight of the starting material and the molecular weight of the product and we will equate it to the expected product. So, first and foremost, we will have to find out the molecular weight of the product. Only molecular weight of the starting material is given. So, we will find the molecular weight of the product. So, molecular weight of the product is the sum of the atomic weight of aluminum and the molecular weight of 3-hydroxyquinoline minus 3 protons. So, it uh, adds up to 459.46. So, this is the molecular weight of ALQ3. So, next what we are supposed to find is the amount of precipitate obtained. So, we know if 133.34 grams of AL3 is uh, able to form 459.46 grams of the complex, then how much will it form for 0.1 gram of the complex? So, we cross multiply and we get the answer. The answer is 0.3446 grams. This is the answer. So, this is a very simple straightforward question. We are asked, we, I am taking so much of the sample, how much, uh, how much product is obtained? So, for that, we must first know the molecular weight of the product for the original molecular weight of the sample. Then we equate it to the given weight and find the answer. So, this is the expected weight. But what we will get is something else. But this weight we must know. That is what they are asking. So, weight of the precipitate. Suppose sometimes if they are giving the weight of the precipitate and if they are asking us to calculate the percentage yield, suppose they have given 0 0.2, 3, 4, 5 grams of the precipitate is obtained, what is the yield of the product obtained? Then we will have to do one more step. So, for 0 0.1 grams, we are expecting uh, this much, but what is obtained is only 0 0.24 grams. So, how much is the yield? So, accordingly, we will do the yield calculation. So, how to calculate the yield? Please look at my previous videos on how to calculate the yield you know, for you to easily understand how to do the next step. Thank you. Like and subscribe.